Well, there's lots of factors here. Let me tell you about sugar. Sugar is the major inflammation situation in the heart. Why? Because sugar elicits an insulin response. And we know that insulin is the most endothelial, unfriendly hormone around. What do I mean by that? Well, in the lining of blood vessels, you have what we call a basement membrane. And when you are putting sugar into your body, and it's not just a sugar you put in your tea or your coffee. It can be bagels and crackers and pastas and, you know, processed carbs, white flours. We call it a high glycemic index because the sugar gets into the bloodstream quickly. Now there's an insulin surge. And when you have surges of insulin and sugar, the insulin, being endothelial cell unfriendly, causes oxidation of the lining of the blood vessel. Now what's that? Well, with oxidation, what happens is you get a generation of free radicals. And if the body's defense mechanisms are overwhelmed, we get free radical oxidative stress and that causes aging. Now, more importantly, the higher sugars in your bloodstream due to insulin surges by eating a lot of sugars, now combined with proteins, and we call that glycation, and that causes accelerated aging. So it's really important to have a good diet, and that's a diet containing a balance of proteins, healthy fats, and really, you know, good carbohydrates like legumes, chickpeas, and broccoli. They have a lower glycemic index. And now I want to come to trans fats. Trans fats are killer fats. They're like unguided missiles. If you read a label and it says that there's trans fats on the label, avoid it at all cost. And by the way, a lot of labels are disguised because it'll say zero trans fats, but it could say partially hydrogenated oils. If it does say that, there's trans fats. So be careful, folks, about labeling. Don't be fooled. If the label has canola oil, cottonseed oil, you know, safflower oil, corn oil, and it has partially hydrogenated, don't take it in. You know, when my patients were suffering and I wanted to help them more, I would say, don't eat anything out of a box or a can. This way, you're protected, you know, from trans fats. Margarines are another example. Some mayonnaises, synthetic mayonnaises, are another example where you want to avoid them. I like organic butter. And yes, it's a saturated fat, but who cares? Organic butter is fine. I have it with my eggs. Now, I talked about oxidation, I talked about sugars, I talked about trans fats. Let me tell you about the stress connection. You know, when I became a psychotherapist years ago, I wrote my book, Heartbreak and Heart Disease, because I realized back in the mid-90s that emotional stress was far more of a risk factor in clogging, you know, your arteries up, much more than this cholesterol hypothesis. Emotional stress sets the cascade of our hormones being driven up, like cortisol and adrenaline and noradrenaline. And when these hormones go up, and why do these hormones go up? It's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. I call it vigilance. These can cause biochemical changes in the body. So stress in combination with a sugary diet and trans fats are really the denominators of poor heart health. So what are the key takeaways here? Look, folks, cholesterol is found at the scene of the crime, but it's not the perpetrator. Cholesterol does a lot of good things. Remember, it's protective. It's a life-sustaining molecule. Saturated fats, they're not too bad. It's all about balance. I mean, look, I don't want you to eat 100% of your calories in saturated fats, but you can put them in your diet. Certainly 10% of your calories can be saturated fat. The real culprits, and what I want you to get is this, sugars and trans fats are their killers and they can create poor heart health. Now what has science taught us about cholesterol and heart health? Well, folks, I call this the old science. You know, you, you would go to your doctor and you would get a total cholesterol and HDL and an LDL and triglycerides and blood sugar and then you see on TV the bad cholesterol, the good cholesterol. This is outdated, it's oversimplified. There's much better science out there. But look, let's take the best of the old science 
And let me dissect it for you because this is what all of us doctors agree on. You know, the, the doctors of antiquity and the newer doctors that believe in this newer science. The best of the old science is this. It's the triglyceride to HDL ratio. And if that ratio is less than two, that's really good for heart health. Let me give you an example. If somebody came into my office and I drew their triglycerides and HDL, and the triglycerides were, let's say, 90, 95, and the HDL was like 50, that ratio is less than two. You know, 100 over 50 is two. But I would see the converse more frequently. I would see people with triglycerides of 250, 300, 400, with HDLs down into the 40s, 45s, 35s. They'd have ratios greater than 10. That's inflammation. That's a ticket to poor heart health. Now, the old science still measures blood sugar, which is very important. And we look at the HDL fraction, which is very important. And another thing we're looking at is this concept of metabolic syndrome. Now, what's that? Well, look, metabolic syndrome is a situation like this. In a woman, if she develops a waist size of about 35 inches, or a man around 40 inches, and the blood pressure tends to go up, the triglycerides are up, the HDL is down, so they have a poor you know, triglyceride to HDL ratio, and their blood sugar seems to creep up, that's metabolic syndrome, and that's really inflammatory. So the best of the old science is looking at metabolic syndrome and looking at that triglyceride to HDL ratio. But now we have the new science. The new science is taking your cholesterol and now dissecting it. We call it cholesterol fractionization. And what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we're looking at this, your HDL components. We call it HDL2 and HDL3, but I'll tell you this. HDL2 is fluffier, more buoyant than HDL3. It's more protective. The same thing is true of LDL. We can't say all LDL is bad, but some LDLs are inflammatory. We can take a very small particle size. It's called a BB shot LDL. It's small, it's dense, it's inflammatory. It makes the blood a little bit thicken. And we call it small BB shot LDL. There's another form of LDL we call LP little a. Maybe your doctor's ordered it for you. I hope he or she has. It's good science. The LP little a is a very small cholesterol particle. It has what we call a disulfide bridge. It's highly inflammatory. It makes the blood clot or thicken. And it causes inflammation inside the blood vessel. We don't want to have a high LP little a. We don't want to have a high small particle LDL. So folks, the new science is really important. When you go to your doctor, and if he and she orders a cholesterol test, tell her you want a VAP test, or an LPP, or an NMR. These are the tests you can get by the modern laboratories. Because look, if you're gonna change your diet for a lifetime, or if you're gonna take a statin drug, you really need to dissect your cholesterol and know exactly what you're treating. If you're treating your cholesterol, your doctor is giving you a drug based on total cholesterol or the amount of HDL or LDL, that's not good science. I don't call that smart medicine. There are far better ways of looking at this total cholesterol concept and myth. You need to dissect it, fractionate it, and bring new science to the table.